Hey guys, welcome to Shadow Skull Studios. I'm Raven Wolf. We're back with another deck list for another Friday. And uh wanna go ahead and guys say that we are two subscriptions away from being at 150 subscribers on YouTube. So if y'all enjoy my content and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Comment down below what you think of this deck or what you think of my content. And uh we're gonna go ahead and get into it. This deck is called Recycling. This is a very mean deck. It's not very competitive it's more this is just an asshole deck this deck it will make you enemies with the entire table it has infinite combos it has a bunch of combos you're gonna spend about 20 minutes of a turn this is a fun deck to play but not to play against and our commander today is the necrobloom which is landfall. When land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 0-1 green plant creature token. If you control 7 or more lands with different names, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token instead. Lands in your graveyard have dredge too. So this deck is really about just getting certain, um, digging through, getting stuff from your deck. Um, filling your graveyard and then hoping that you can get your graveyard onto the field, doing a bunch of shenanigans. Uh, this deck is not optimized yet. I have not finished it. Um, I'm still tweaking it, figuring out what I want to put in, take out, all that, all that sorts of stuff. But getting into it, we have our Planeswalker, Nissa the Shadowed Bows. When a land enters battlefield under control, put a loyalty counter on Nissa of Shadowed Bows. On tap target land you control. You may have it become a 33 with haste and menace. To in turn, it's still a land. Minus 5. You may put a creature card with converted mana cost equal to or less to a number of lands you control in the battlefield from your hand or graveyard with two 1-1 one -one counters on it. So uh, Nissa is going to be our gra uh, w a source of graveyard recursion. Um, and she can turn lands into creatures, which we do care about. And I'll uh, tell you all then. We have... Admoni Admonition Angel. I can't pronounce that word. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile target non permanent other than her. When she leaves the battlefield, return all cards, exile with it. to the battlefield under your control. Basically, it's going to be kind of like an O-ring angel. Uh, and uh, she's basically going to be a source of removal to control our opponents. Because we're basically getting certain pieces of theirs off the board. And then we can usually, if we want to bounce our stuff, we can do that with her too. Aftermath Analyst, when it NTBs, we mill three, and then we can pay three in a green, sacrifice it, return all land cards from your graveyard to battlefield tapped. Be a bunch of landfall triggers. Ashaya, Soul of the Wild. Uh, power tough is equal to number of lands you control. Non token creatures you control are forests in addition to their other types. Um, that one's not going to uh, matter as much. Or the, the first one does not matter. The second ability is what's going to matter for other stuff in the future. Athreos, God of Passage. When another creature you own dies, return it to your hand unless her opponent pays 3 life. This is going to be all another source of recursion or life drain for our opponents. We have Blood Artist. When Blood Artist, whoops, when Blood Artist or another creature dies, target opponent loses one life. You gain one life. This is also going to be important when we turn our lands into creatures. We have Blood Gast. Uh, when land enters battlefield under your control, we return it from the graveyard to the battlefield. Caustic Crawler, Land of Fall. When land ETBs, you may have target creature minus one, get minus one minus one till end of turn. This is going to be a source of removal. Dune Dane Rangers. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, if you don't control a ring bearer, the ring tempts you. Um, this one is going to go into an infinite combo with a card in the future. Elas Ilkor Sadistic Pilgrim. When another cre creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. When another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. Um, this can be another way to drain our opponents for life and hopefully you know, keep us alive. Amiria Angel. When we get a land, we make a 1-1 one -one bird. Amiria Shepherd. Um, this land, this is going to be our Graveyard Recursion Landfall. We have Eternal Witness for Graveyard Recursion as well. Evolution, Evolution Sage. Um, this one is going to be for like proliferation, stuff like that. 
We have Gollum, Patient Plotter. Um, sacrifice a creature, return Gollum from your graveyard to your hands, and then when it leaves the battlefield, bring Tibshu. Um, the Ring Temps, this is only going to go with one other card in the deck. Green Sleeves, Marrow Sorcerer. When we get a land, we get a 3 3 Badger. Iridescent and Vine Lasher. This is going to come out with a uh, Bloom Barrow, but when land ETBs, one damage to target opponent, so we can burn our opponent. Kodama the East Tree. Uh, this and Bailiffs and a Bounce Land go infinite, so we get infinite 4-4s. Uh, four we have Lotus Cobra. Uh, that is also part of another combo with the Bailiffs. And another card that I will explain. We have Magus of the Balance. This is to kind of just like slow down the deck, plus we have Graveyard Recursion anyways. So mostly it's going to slow down our opponents and... Hopefully you trigger a lot of things. Nether Trader is another card that uh, when a creature is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, we can pay one, get it back. Um, next to the list, the Fallen. Uh, this is lands. Um, ETBs that will drain our opponent's life, and he will get bigger. Opposition Agent. This is to stop our opponents from searching, especially with certain lands we control. Rampaging Bailiffs. Um, this is an infinite combo, like I said, with Kodama. We're going to make infinite 4-4s four with it. It and Lotus Cobra also go in an infinite combo. Then we have Scoot Swarm, which is just a threat on the board. We're going to make a bunch of insects or copies of Scoot Swarm. We have 6. When it attacks, we mill 3, get a land. And then all our non-land permanents uh, have retrace. So we're going to be doing that as well, especially with our commander. Skyclave Shade is another card that when ATBs, um, we can cast it from our graveyard. Smeagol, Helpful Guide. This Bailiff's the Dune Dane and uh, a Sack Outlet go infinite. So we're going to basically mill out our entire opponents. We're going to mill our opponents and get all their lands, essentially, is what this will do. And I will explain it later. Spring Heart, Nantuko. Um, this one is a landfall that we can either make one with insects or we can make copies of the creature that it's attached to. So we can do a bunch of shenanigans. Sun Titan is going to be our land, not land recursion, though, but it's going to be our graveyard recursion for any of our cheap stuff. Tato Farmer. Um, this will help us mill ourselves and we can also use it to get an extra landfall trigger. Tireless Provisioner. This will help us uh, ramp out with treasures. Tireless Tracker will get us some clue tokens. Titania, Protector of Argoth. Um, this will help us with our land sacking outlets. Titania, Voice of Gaia. This will gain us life for our lands going into the graveyard. And it will flip over. Trove Warden. Um, when it enters the battlefield under your control, exile target permanent card with three or less from your graveyard. And when it dies, put each card exile with it to the battlefield under its, uh, that card's owner. So we basically, if we do a huge landfall stuff, we can exile all of our cheap stuff in our graveyard, sack it, and we'll get all that stuff back. Turn Timber Sour. Um, this is when we mill our lands or we discard them or sack them. We get some plants, sacrifice through creatures, get a... Land from our graveyard to the to our hand. Viserys seer. This will let sack creatures ascry one. Going on to our sorceries. We have Awaken the Woods, which will make us a bunch of land creatures. We have Exterminatus, which will make all our opponents' uh, permanents lose indestructible until end of turn. And destroy all non-land permanents. So, um, this, if we... Can, um, especially with the Shia, turn our creatures into lands. We can keep all our creatures. Uh, natural balance. This will make everybody sack their lands down to five. And anybody ha has less than five goes. Yeah, and then goes and basically gets their lands up to five. But, uh, hang on. Yeah, so yeah, anybody with more than five lands, sacks them to five. Anybody with less than five, gets up to five. Planar Cleansing, this is the same as Exterminatus. 
We're going to destroy all non-land permanents. We have Restore, which will um, make everybody basically the field balanced, but we have good graveyard recursion. Root Awakening. Um, this will help us ramp out, and it will turn our lands into creatures. Constant Miss. Um, this is a fog effect, that which buyback, we can sack land. So this will kind of help us out, and it can stall out the game for a little bit. Denting Blows, which is Crows and Grip. Split second, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Heroic Intervention is for protection. Path to Exile for removal. Return to Dust. Plus the Opposition Agent, this is just good. Um, then we have Return to Dust for removal. Swords Plowshares for removal. Deferious Protection for protection. We have Alter Dementia, where we sack a creature. Target player mills cards equal to its power. This will also help us sack our land creatures. So we can get our sack land triggers and creature triggers, all that type of stuff. Arcane Signet, uh, Astronaut's Altar, which is a ramp, and it goes with the sacking land creatures. Commander Sphere, Phyrexian Altar, Realm Breaker, the Invasion Tree. We're going to steal our opponent's lands. Soul Ring, and Zurin Orb. When we sack a land, we get to life, so it's another sack outlet. Crawling Sensation. At the beginning of keep, we mill two cards and win or more land cards put in our graveyard. For the first time, each turn, we get a 1-1 green insect. We have Earthcraft, which is a very expensive card, I know. But this one will go into an infinite combo. So we can just uh, basically just ramp out. Felidar Retreat will help us, hopefully make us a bunch of creatures. But we could also use it for one counter on each of our creatures. So that, with Evolution Sage, will just go bonkers. Overgrown Estate, sack of lands, get three life. Perilous Foray, so we sack a creature, and we go get a basic land, put in play tapped. Perilous Resources, or Squandered Resources, my bad. Sacrifice a land, and then we get mana that the land could produce. This is another sack land outfit. And Zenikar's Royal, which will hopefully make us more creatures when lands ETB. Now, for the land base, I kept it pretty simple. We have Argoth, Sanctum of Nature, Command Tower, Evolving Wilds, Exotic Orchard, Field of Ruin to destroy our opponent's non-basic land. Plus, with Opposition Agent, we basically go and get a land from their deck. We have nine forests, because we have a lot of green. Ghost Quarter, uh, this is to destroy our opponent's non-basic lands and to get our sack outlet on. And... Uh, if they want to go search their deck and we have Opposition Agent, we get that land. Golgari Rot Farm is a bounce land. We go infinite with the Bailiffs. Lotus Field. ATBs, we sack two lands and then we get, tap it to get three. Orzab Basilica, another bounce land. Four planes. One Selesnian Sanctuary for a bounce land. A Strip Mine. Five Swamps. Trans Guild Promenade. Verdant Catacombs as a fetch land. Volatile Fault as he destroyed non basic land and we get a treasure. And Wasteland for destroyed target non basic land. So, uh, yeah, this deck is very mean. Plus, it has some land destruction, which is super mean. But uh, let's go ahead and we will play test it. And I'll show y'all what I mean. We're going to go ahead and draw for a turn. We're going to play a swamp. And then we're just going to go to our next turn. We're going to go ahead and play the Selesnia Sanctuary, bouncing a land. And then we're going to go ahead and discard that swamp. Go to turn three. We're going to tap Lotus Cobra. Um, with that, we're going to go ahead and play a swamp. Make a green mana. Tap. And do squandered resources. Next turn. Wow, we got our swamps on today. We're going to do that. Make a green mana. And then what we're going to do is tap. Tap, tap. And with our green mana, X will be three. We're going to go ahead and make three land creatures. So, hey, get off my screen. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Do we not have the dryads? Forest dryad. Forest Triad and Forest Triad. And with the Forest Triads, we get three mana. I'm going to go ahead and do. Huh. Let's 
go ahead and do Squid Swarm. All right, going on to turn five, we have ramped out a lot. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And then what we'll do... Oh, with that, let me see here. We control six or more lands, which we do. Um, we make a copy of Scoot Swarm. Make a copy of Scoot Swarm. Then, oh yeah, we also have mana. I'll make another white mana, I guess. Um, so with that white mana, we'll do this and this. We'll go ahead and cast Necrobloom. Going ahead, we'll tap. And then we'll tap to... Four... Uh, turn timber sour or sower and then basically turn six we have all this shenanigans going on let's just say we'll tap that for black play Golgari rot farm bounce this to our hand we make mana we make another scoot swarm oh we do it twice Oh, crap. All right, hang on. Token copy. Token copy. So, cool. We made two Scoot Swarms. Then, we'll go ahead and... We have a black floating. We'll make uh, another black. We'll do Golem. Oh, yeah. So, now I have a creature. Um, with that, we don't have multiple names. So, we just make a zero one plant. But turn six, we have a pretty good board. We have enough blockers to do stuff. We're just going to be doing shenanigans. Uh, we don't have a lot of card draw. Maybe I should put some more in there in the future. Let's go ahead and restart. Boop. Draw for turn. I'm just going to go ahead and play it. We're going to do an Evolving Wilds. Do I want to do an Evolving Wilds? No, I don't. We're going to do black. Tap for... The Vine Lasher. Next turn. I'm not getting a... Uh... We'll do an Evolving Wild. Crack it to hit uh, one of our opponents. We'll crack it to go get a Forest. Close and Shuffle. We'll hit uh, another one of our opponents. Now this one's going by a lot slower, but that's fine. We're going to go ahead and do this. Lotus Cobra. Uh, we'll do a land. Hitting one of our opponents. We get a mana, but I can't really do anything with it. So I guess what we should have done is this. We'll do that. Get the mana. We'll crack it, blow up one of our opponent's lands, and we make a treasure. Treasure token. Boom. There we go. And we hit one of our opponents for mana. So next turn. We'll do that. We'll get a mana. And then we'll go ahead and we'll just cast our commander. Uh, next turn. We'll do that. Um, pop, pop, pop. We'll do that. Then what we'll do... Or oh, hang on. Better yet. It's a better idea. We'll tap out. We'll do... Titleist Provisioner. Play a land. Getting that and a treasure. Because uh, we don't want to misplay our turns. We're dealing one damage to our opponents. So I have a floating mana. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Crack our tokens. And with that, we will make an Amira Angel. Also, we made a plant. Because we make lots of triggers. Turn six. Oof, we ran out of lands. That's fine, though. So I guess what we'll do... We'll just do a Tato Farmer. Tato Farmer! And then probably we can start doing some other stuff. Like if we wanted to, we start swinging. Oof, not great. 
We'll play Squandered Resources. Uh, we'll sack a uh, we'll sack a planes for mana. Or no, we'll tap the land for mana. So we have a uh, white mana. We'll sack it, making another white mana. We will tap Tato Farmer. Bring the land back. Does it put it on the battlefield tapped? It does bring it back tapped. Uh, we'll use it to make green mana and a treasure and a bird and a token. <laughs> As you can see, this deck does get out of hand. So yeah, we do that. I'm going to say we made a green mana. Make a, a treasure token. Does it make a tap treasure? No, it does not. Okay, so then, with that floating mana and that, we're going to crack our treasure. Tap that for the green and that and the floating white. Perilous. Boom. Now, this is where... And also, we've been dealing damage to our opponents. It's fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sack our planes. Um, when we sack a planes for mana, what we can do, um, we're going to pay that mana to Perilous Forays. We're going to sack a plant token. Go get a basic land. Um, I want another forest. Hey. Hey. Get in there. Close the shuffle. It goes into battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield tapped, um, we make another plant token. We make another bird token. We're going to make a treasure token. I think we can kind of go in. I think we're going infinite. But that infinite is literally because of like lowest cobra and this like we just have enough land ETB benefits to go infinite because we have our floating mana. I'll say we make it. Let's make it green. Yeah, that'll work. All right. Um. So I think we with that we're going to sack a token. Using our floating mana from Lowe's Cobra, we go and we get a land. I think, yeah. So we're basically going to go infinite with Lotus Cobra and Perilous Forays. And uh, it will be, we make infinite, we make as many treasures as we get basic lands. Essentially, is what happens. But the uh, Perilous, Lotus Cobra, and anything that makes a creature essentially is an infinite combo right here so yeah with this and or with necrobloom instead there is an infinite combo instant you're basically gonna get every basic land from your deck you're gonna have uh, a bunch of plant tokens so let's go ahead and restart it because this deck is honestly fun i did not think it would be this fun so what we're gonna go ahead and do Actually, we're going to mulligan that. Because I thought that was a command tower. That is not a command tower. Man, that's also a bad hand. What are with these bad hands? Alright, we'll keep that one. We'll draw for turn. We'll play a swamp. Next turn, we'll do forest, squander resources. Next turn. All right, we'll do forest into a soul ring. And then we'll tap and we'll do an earthcraft. Next turn, Zach Orchard. And we'll just say that uh, our opponent has a white mana source. Necroblossom with earthcraft. We'll tap, untap. Uh, so we could probably do some shenanigans, so we don't untap target, not target basic land, so we untap a forest. Um, and what we could do is we'll tap that for green, sack a land for green, 
tap, so we are flowing colorless. And now we will do an eternal witness, getting the land back to our hand. And we just have more lands in our hand. Uh, actually, let's. Yeah, it won't matter to me. Next turn. Oof, we are missing whites, but that's we only have one white. That's fine. We play lands. We make plant token. Plant token. Oh, I just wish we had white mana. That's the issue. So this one is going to be, just because we're mana screwed, it's going to be costing us. Because uh, without that double white. But we could easily, we'll say, cool. Sword Splash here or something if we wanted to. Uh, I just don't, we don't have enough white mana. Go to turn six. I like Ghostly Quarter. Say, well, let's do Ghostly Quarter. We'll tap for a white mana. Oh, I forgot we make a we we make token plant token. All right. Uh, so what I will do? We'll tap, blow up, exotic orchard, second this, and we're gonna go get a plains. Close. Just put it on the battlefield tapped. Oh no! It just puts it on the battlefield. Wow. So we'll tap and tap, and then we can do ba -ba -ba -ba, a Myria Shepherd. And with that, now we can start doing some shenanigans. Because what we'll do is we'll tap, untap, and then we can just float the mana and tap our tokens. Turn seven, return to dust, we'll start removing stuff. So let's go ahead and we'll do one more. I will keep this hand. We will draw. Um, immediately, we're going to do a Plains, turn two, Swamp, Arcane Signet, next turn, we will do Forest, and with that Forest, do I want to do a Forest? Yeah, because the Angel is pretty expensive. Yeah, so what we'll do is one, two, three, Commander Sphere. Next turn, we're just ramping out at this point, but that's fine with me. Um, what I'll do is green, green, and one. We're going to do uh, Titania. Um, then what we're going to do with that in green, we'll do uh, Aftermath Analyst. We mill three. Uh, we milled a land, so we gain two life. Next turn, on turn five, we have an infinite combo piece, but we don't want to be too greedy with it. So we'll do one, two, three, four. Necro Bloom. Uh, with that, I'm going to play a forest, and we make a plant token. Uh, let me see here. We only have two mana. So what we're going to do, we're going to threaten our opponents. Make us of the balance. Next turn. Ooh, another trader is good. Uh, yeah, we'll do a swamp. Swamp. Cast another trader, and now we have just a really good blocker. Or, or no, it can't block, uh, but an attacker. Um, then we'll do. Let me see what we have. Don't have enough mana. But that is fine. Do I want to tap four mana just to get a swamp? <laughs> I really don't. So we'll do this on uh, next turn. But that um, we're going to mill two to get a swamp. To our hand, right? Graveyard to your hand. And you'll have two cards instead of drawing a card. So yeah. yeah. So um, and those two go in the grave. We'll play a swamp. Making a necro bloom. Or we don't make a necro bloom, but we make a plant token. We make plant. Um, and then what we'll do is green that one, two, three, 
We'll do Titania, Protector of Orgoth. Which I probably could have done instead of the Dredge. I kind of, maybe I misplayed that, but that's fine with me. Um, and Battlefield, we don't have any in the grave, I don't think. Yeah, we don't. But that's fine. Alright, let's go to turn 8. We can do the Skyclade, yeah. So, I'm surprised though, in all these games, we have not seen any of our sack outlets. And, like, some of them, we've also had some bad hands. I'm very surprised. I've never had... Because our mana base is what I always do. Yeah, our mana base is kind of messed up. That's weird. I might have to work on our mana base, but that's fine with me. I'm not too tore up about it, all honesty. Uh, I guess because a lot of our pieces are expensive. But again, that does not bother me. But yeah, guys, um, I would say if you test this deck out on Moxfield, see what you like to do, adjust it, and if you have any advice for it, please comment down below. I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.